In today's video, we're going to talk about this new event, this new escalation that has just happened in the Ukraine, or should I say, has just happened in Washington and Brussels, which is now going to affect the conflict within Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine. And many analysts are already saying about this new announcement that this could be the tipping point into World War Three. So what is this announcement then? Well, last week, the UK or Britain, if you prefer that term, announced that they were going to send 14 Challenger 2 tanks to Ukraine to help them in the fight. When I first heard this, and again, I only report on the Russia-Ukraine news whenever something really, really important happens. Otherwise, I stick to the economics and finance side of things. But to me, this is a really, really major event that happened last week. I didn't report on it then because I wanted to see what would happen. I thought probably what's going to happen, if you remember my theory on how we're moving towards this World War Three period, the UK is very good at doing things like this. They start things off and then they wait for backup from others. And then, of course, there was a lot of talk between a lot of um, NATO countries, a lot of EU countries, on whether they should follow what the UK has announced with the Challenger 2s. So it's been going back and forth for the last week, and it really then came down to, okay, USA, you're the strongest you know, kid in the pack here, in the little gang. We need you to back us up. If we're going to go forward and say that we're going to announce tanks for Ukraine, then we need you to back us up here. So that's how it sort of ended up. And then the announcement came yesterday where you saw the president go on to, you know, TV and uh, read his read his script. Hello. And he basically made the announcement that the USA was going to be sending some of these um, Abram tanks to Ukraine. So 31 in total. Well, of course, this has now opened the floodgates, as it were. So everyone's saying that it's the USA that started this and it's going to be a bloodbath and everything else. Well, actually, it wasn't necessarily the USA that started it. It was actually the UK who who began with the 14 Challenger tanks. And even then, there was things that happened before that other countries talked about sending tanks. But actually, all of the NATO countries have been sending armaments and heavy weaponry as well to Ukraine. Well, you could call it medium weaponry, but some of the heavier um, armored vehicles. These have been sent for a while now. In fact, the USA has been sending huge amounts and they've just ramped up all the armaments industries in the USA as a result of um, the ongoing support. And this is actually, if we get into more of the political side here or the political influence side, this is why I've been saying you're going to see it like the yes ladder, if you understand that theory. You start with one thing, next thing, next thing. So what did I say near the beginning of this? I said it will start with humanitarian aid. It will then be medical aid. It will be um, food. It will be you know things like this. Then it would escalate to defensive things. So body armor for the soldiers and helmets for the soldiers in Ukraine. Next thing it would be I'll provide in better weapons for them. Then after the better weapons, the floodgates would open and you'd get to the phase of, you know, where you get to the very, very heavy armaments. But actually, we've just crossed that line now. So everything I talked about before, that line is now done over. We've now gone into the next phase of this conflict. And it's quite interesting listening to all these military analysts. When I listen, I listened to a really good guy and he was a British ex-military, ex-army officer. And his assessment was probably the most fair and honest that I've seen so far. I saw some of the Russian stuff and I also saw a lot of the mainstream media things. Um, it was really propaganda on both sides of the fence with it. And I was really amazed to see Biden and you know the White House and the statements got put out saying this will create peace in Ukraine. That's why we're sending these 31 tanks. And when I kept hearing this, I thought, surely someone's going to say that's absolute nonsense. That's crazy to say that sending these tanks and now all of Europe sending tanks is going to result in peace. No, that is the next leg up. 
on the military spectrum, this is where you're going to get huge amounts of collateral damage and you're going to have thousands now, um, th thousands and thousands more soldiers killed. And I actually think this is going to prolong this conflict and take us into the next stage. I don't think it's going to make it um, go away quicker and result in, in peace. I just don't see that at all. In fact, what I'm seeing is many politicians, and, and this is the thing, you don't know what their incentives are. You don't know who is getting arms twisted, shall we say, by their lobbyists, because, I mean, this is not conspiracy anymore. Everyone knows that there are these huge amounts of lobbying that goes on in Washington and other countries around the world as well. But they just don't like to talk about the lobbying aspect and they don't like to talk about you know, they're not bribes anymore, are they? But they are campaign pledges, and then you have to do something for us later on. Well, I think this is probably where you've got a lot of the defense industry and lobbyists. It is their job to make more profit. That is, that is what they do as a company. They make profit. Why would they want peace in the Ukraine? That They wouldn't. They want to see more conflict. They want to see this stirred up. So that's why I believe you're not seeing you know, this constant, like, ongoing push for peace talks. And actually what you're seeing is how do we ramp up the the warfare aspect. Now, one of the other things I, I've been watching um, today with the analysts is that they said there was this one analyst, and I honestly, I, I couldn't really understand that anything this guy is trying to get across because it didn't make any sense. He was saying that now these 31 Abram tanks going to Ukraine will tip the balance. So that's the first thing he said. But then later on, he was saying that, oh, the Ukraine is decimating Russian troops. It's just, I think he gave the example, it's like, you know, the Ukraine is the Mike Tyson fighting against an amateur boxer and, you know, all this sort of stuff. So on the one hand, he's talking about how these tanks are going to flip the battle in favor of Ukraine. On the other hand, he's saying that Ukraine is, you know, destroying Russia. The reason I disagree with, you know, the whole aspect of these tanks going in are going to flip the battle is that Russia's already got hundreds of tanks. Now, yeah, they're old. I think they were built in you know, the 70s area, T-72, built in, you know, 73, something like that. So they're already 50 years old, but they've got a lot of them with thousands, if not tens of thousands or even more back in reserve. And I'm no expert on tanks and, and things like that. That wasn't what I did in the army. But one thing I do know is that and you've probably seen this in some of the old movies as well. You can have the best tank in the world that runs on jet fuel, which this Abraham tank actually runs on. Yes, jet fuel, which is great if you've got the American logistics chain, but most countries don't. So he was trying to compare how amazing these tanks are compared to other tanks and, you know, everything else. But actually, it's not quite that simple. It's not as if this one Abram can go into, you know, 10 T-72s and just wipe them all out because it's got better armor and, and better armaments and anti-tank weaponry and, and all of that. It's not quite that simple. A lot of it comes down to, in my opinion, the tank commander and that person's crew or even more tanks. That is usually what it comes down to. Yeah, of course, it will give you an edge to have a much better tank, but it really is about the people in my experience. Now, Europe is actually sending some very different. These are called the Leopard 2 tanks, and these are quite different. They run on diesel fuel, so it's a lot easier actually to get fueled via the supply lines to refuel these tanks. And the other thing is they've been around for a long time, so you're going to have in Europe between all the different countries a lot of um, Class A vehicle mechanics, which work on mechanized um, vehicles and tanks and things like that. You're going to have a really good supply of spares. You're going to have experts uh, right across Europe from different armies that will come together. And of course, the other thing you'll have an easy supply of is diesel versus the jet fuel that the Abrams use. So here's what I actually think about this. I think the USA sending those tanks was more of a token gesture, because even though I would assume that Russia and the generals are 
annoyed by this new um, event that's taking place, this new escalation, if we use that word. I don't really think they'll see it as, oh, America is, is you know, going to war with us. They're ramping up their entire army to come and fight with us, which, again, I've heard on the, the flip side as well. So I'm hearing a lot of different reports here. And I just apply logic and common sense to these things. I haven't got a dog in this fight. Although, if uh, you know the UK keeps going with starting all this stuff off, Operation Mobilize, that was the other one, mobilizing the civilians, and we're going to take the fight to Russia, and Liz Truss saying that she wants to gear up the military against China, if you remember that ridiculous thing last year. I just think at the moment, and you know, again, this is not popular opinion what I'm about to say, but I think Ukraine is just being used as a war ground, just as a giant battlefield, as a proxy for NATO against Russia. And my biggest concern with everything going on is that if this continues and some of the other BRICS nations start to get upset by what they see going on, then this could draw in other countries. And that would um, that would not be good. Let's just Let's just say that, especially with the conflict that already exists between the US and China over Taiwan. We need to be very careful about what's going on at the moment, but of course, no one wants to be careful. The politicians just seem hellbent on escalation right now. Now, the other thing I want to bring your attention to is this in yellow here. So apparently, and again, I use the word apparently lightly, Russian generals suggest to Putin to declare general mobilization in Russia as soon as the first German tank enters Ukraine. According to the Russians, NATO is planning a new operation, Barbarossa, a fact that fully justifies the general mobilization. Now, this is Wikipedia, so take this with a, a grain of salt. So what Wikipedia says about this operation Barbarossa then is that it was the invasion of the Soviet Union by Nazi Germany and many of its Axis allies. So this is when, uh, 22nd of June, 1941. It was the largest land offensive in human history with over 10 million combatants taking part. Well, I don't think we need to worry about 10 million combatants taking part um, this time around. I think a lot of it is, as I said, it's just a battleground for testing new weapons and drones and everything else. Uh, again, take this as you will. The German armies eventually captured some 5 million Soviet Red Army troops, and they deliberately starved to death or otherwise killed 3.3 million Soviet prisoners of war and millions of civilians as the hunger plan worked to solve German food shortages and exterminate the Slavic population through starvation. So we've also got to bear that in mind because if as a country you've still got that fresh that back in 1940s era, so you know 80 years ago now, that that happened to you as a country, how would you feel about German tanks coming onto your soil? Which, of course, they're not. They're going into Ukraine, but that's how it starts. Next thing, it could be going into Russia. So in total, then, how many of these tanks are going to be sent to Ukraine? Well, it's almost 200 battle tanks. And these announcements follow the deployment, according to the Pentagon, of about 900 armored personnel carriers to Ukraine, including the Bradley, the Stryker, and the Marda infantry fighting vehicles. So which countries are sending them? It's Germany, Finland, Poland, Portugal, Spain, Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, the US, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, UK, and France. But actually, I believe Canada is now wants to get involved as well. So what is the goal then? The goal is for Germany and its allies to provide Ukraine with 88 of the German-made leopards, which comprise two battalions. Uh, I thought this was quite a funny statement. Uh, so the Ukraine president expressed satisfaction at the news. So apparently he wasn't overly um, happy and uh, excited that he was going to be getting these new tanks. Apparently, he, he, he wasn't too happy and said he was satisfied with this for now. But he obviously needs a lot more. He wants hundreds uh, more tanks to be pledged. And that reminded me of when he uh, made the surprise visit to the USA and everyone said, 
oh wow, you know, he's a, a wartime president and he was able to make this dangerous flight to the USA. When actually the, the truth is, is a little bit different as to why he made this visit. So overall, what do I think is going to happen here then? I think this is going to only escalate the situation. But remember, this is going to be months for the um, tanks to be operational anyway. So all of these analysts that are saying that they need these tanks for the uh, February offensive um, to, to push back Russia. Well, they're not going to arrive in February. You know, we're nearing the end of January. Now, this is going to take months to get these tanks across the ocean. It's going to take a long time as well to actually train the Ukrainians to use them. But of course, that will be the next escalation. And then they'll need to justify sending in um, US or NATO uh, personnel to actually drive the tanks. And don't forget that Russia has already said that they're willing to use tactical nukes on the battlefield. So this is obviously uh, another concern because as this then drags in or draws in more countries and more uh, resources, more personnel, more um, money that could be used for all of these crises that are going on around the world right now. And yet it's all going to be start drawing into uh, warfare. And the USA has already spent an absolute fortune, which is only going to keep this war going for longer. Okay, thanks for watching today. Take care. God bless.